Yes, I have tricks up my sleeves and things in my pockets, but I am no magician. A magician gives you an illusion which has the appearance of the truth. I, however, give truth a pleasant disguise of an illusion. First of all, I will turn back time. The 30s were the huge middle class of America was matriculating in the school for the blind. Here there is only shouting and confusion. Where, lit, where disturbances of labor, sometimes petty violence, in some peaceful city such as Chicago or Cleveland, had, had a dissolving economy. This is a memory play, and in a memory it is sentimental but not real. I, Tom, am the narrator and also a character. The other characters are my mother, Amanda, my sister, Laura, and, and a gentleman caller that comes near the end. I think the rest of the play will speak itself. Tom! Tom, come in! We can't say grace until we come to the table. I'm coming, Mom, I'm coming. Let's say grace. 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 Tom, don't use your fingers. And swallow and chew your food before you swallow. Eat it slowly and enjoy all the delicious flavors. I couldn't enjoy my meal with your constant nagging. You always rush me when I'm eating. That's not that cute, Tom. I'm getting a smoke. You smoke way too much. Okay, Paul. I'll I'll get it. Put it down. Uh. You say you say fresh and pretty for your gentleman colors. Okay. Uh, you know, they come when when you least expect them. I remember one day, I went to the Blue Mountains, and and I, when I come back in the afternoon, I received seventeen gentleman colors. Why'd you amuse them all? Well, I know the secret of conversation. Girls back then know how to talk and entertain entertain the boys. Girls only need not uh, a pretty face, and the amazing figure, figure is not enough for a girl back then. Mind you, I wasn't missing either. I'll clean the table. Leave it down, put it down. You go upstairs and study. Stay fresh and pretty for your admirers. How many admirers do you think you will have? I don't think that I'm going to get any, Mom. None? No admirers? No, because I'm not... As, fa as famous as you back then when you were in Blue Mountain, Mom. <sighs> Mom is just scared that I'm not going to get married in my entire life. The next day, my mother found out Laura stopped attending school at Rubicam's business college. My mother said she'd stop by at school to see if Laura had done well in her classes. But the teacher told her that she hadn't come to class since the first day when she had a nervous breakdown. Without putting out a fight, Laura admitted that she had been skipping class to go to zoos and watching movies to pass the time. From that point on, the idea for my sister to be married had become my mother's greater concern, as she thought that this was the only way for Laura to live happily even though she threw her business career out the window. Later on, my mother and I had a huge argument while Laura was watching cowardly. I was so angry at my mother telling me that I was so selfish after explaining how I always paid the rent to afford the roof that we all lived under. That I hated the job that I always had to go every morning with a passion. But I stayed at the warehouse just so that I can roll some money in for the family. I also told her that if I really were selfish, I would have left the apartment long ago without any regrets. Mom, I'm, I'm sorry about yesterday. I didn't mean what I said. I'm sorry.
Tom, you're a good boy. You really are. Both my children are, gr are gifts from God. Here, have a well little breakfast. Thanks, Mom, but just coffee. Fine, Tom. I sent your sister out so we can discuss about her. We have to plan her future. She has nothing but drift about. It worries me, unless she has a husband to take care of her. What? I saw that letter you got from the merchant Marine. I know what you are dreaming of. And I allow you to do it. But not until we find a replacement for you. I don't understand. As soon as Laura gets married and has a husband, you'll be free for, to fulfill your desire and go wherever you want. But until then, you have to stay and look out for your sister. All she does is fool around with those pieces of glass. And what kind of life would that lead? What can I do? Well, suppress your selfishness. You only think of yourself. Tom, down at the warehouses, are there any na nice men? Find a good young man for a sister to meet. Oh my god. Why are you complaining? It's for your sister. Yes, yes, yes. I talked to my mother when I got back from work, and I revealed that I found a gentleman caller for Laura. My mother was ecstatic, and she continually bombarded me with questions about Jim's character. She questioned his aspiration and morals. When I explained how great he was, my mother instantly accepted his presence. He hoped that he would be a part of Laura's future as her husband. Tonight was the night that Jim would come to our apartment for dinner. I had known Jim slightly in high school. He had a tremendous Irish good nature, vitality, and seemed to move in a continual spotlight. He was a star in basketball, captain of the debating club, and was the lead singer in annual light operas. He was basically the crown jewel of what you would expect in a model student. But six years after graduation, he was holding a job that wasn't much better than mine. I was, a, I was on friendly terms with Jim, as I was the only one who remembers his former glory. He knows my secret of retiring to the washroom to write my poems. Therefore, he named me Shakespeare for my passion for writing. I knew that Jim and Laura were in high school together. Laura had told me a whole bunch of stories of how she adored him. She told me one time how Jim asked her what was wrong and answered him that she had tuberculosis, but heard wrong it was and thought it was Blue Roses. Since then, he always called Laura Blue Roses. Although that happened at high school, I wasn't sure if Jim would still remember her for all these years. Um, Mom, can you let them in, please? What's wrong with you? Go open the door quick. I can't. I'm sick. Laura Winfield. Go open the door! Okay. Hey, nice Hi. to meet you. Hello. Excuse me. She's shy. That's rare. You should consider taking night courses with me. We don't belong in the warehouse. I'm moving soon. I'm tired of the movies. What? When? Where? Soon. Here, look. Tom, come here! Oh, hello, Mr. O'Connor. I've heard a lot about you from Tom. I've told him that he can bring his friend home for supper. How about that supper? Well, this is our supper. Let's eat it. Laura, we can't say grace until you come. Okay. Oh, Laura! Laura! Tom, bring your sister to the couch. Jim, don't worry. It must be the heat in this room. Tom, come back. 
Yeah. Let's just say Grace. 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 Jim, Laura is pretty lonely by herself on the couch. Why don't you go keep her company? Sure. Hey, Laura. Hi. How are you feeling? Better. That's good. I uh, brought you this. Oh, thanks. So, do you want to sit closer to me on the ground? Mm, yeah. Have you continued singing? You know that I sing? Yeah, I remember your beautiful voice. We had singing together, of course. Yes, I remember. So, have you talked to anyone from high school lately? Um, I'm really shy. Well, that's something you need to work on. What have you done since high school? Nothing much. I just sit around and spend time on my class of luxury. Hmm. I know what your problem is. You have inferiority complex. You lack support and you need positive encouragement from people. You need to believe that you can do anything. There must be something you're good at. I don't know. Well, my passion is mechanics. So, what's yours? I just have my collection of glass here. That's amazing. Laura, has, has anyone ever told you how beautiful you are? In what way? In every way. I know Tom's trying to get a gentleman collar for you, but, but choosing me was a mistake. I can't be with you because I'm Engaged. I'm sorry, Laura. Okay. Who wants you to have this as a gift? Jim, I heard you're leaving. Please stay a little bit longer. I can't, Miss Winfield. I have to pick up my fiance. What? what? You you're engaged? Yeah, I'm getting married this year. <laughs> How, how nice! Tom, Tom never told, about, told me about it. Well, well, goodbye. Goodbye. Tom. Yeah, Mom. Why did you tell me Jim, Jim was engaged? I didn't know. It's not my warehouse. Isn't someplace I socialize. But you told me he was a best friend. Do you know anything? You and your selfish dreams. We're going out. Leave. You selfish, no you son. Bye. No. I'll go. No. <gasps> After that night, I got fired from writing poems on one of the shoebox lists during work at the warehouse. I left St. Louis and what was left of my family for good. I travel great distances, anywhere to get away from that godforsaken place. But everywhere I looked, I saw delicate glass, fragile to the slightest touch. As I walked, I saw a window with products that reminded me of the glass menagerie that Laura used to have. Then, all at once, my sister touches my shoulder, and I turn around! Laura, I tried to forget you, but I can't. Blow out your candles. And so, goodbye.